What's up everybody, Intermon here with Darian's Pokemon. Gonna be playing a game on PTCGO today. It's late. It is like past midnight at the time of recording and I have a snow day. Not a snow day. I have a school day tomorrow and I'm hoping for a snow day. So I had to stay up late. I just got done doing a lot of business talk with Darian. So we talk a business, just talking things, direction for the channel, a lot of exciting stuff coming up down the line that we got in the works. So that was pretty cool getting to talk with him. I mean, we talked for like three hours, really got to hash some things out. We planned on filming a video together, but uh, yep, didn't exactly get around to it. And then, you know, one thing led to another and it was like past midnight and I was like, oh gosh, I gotta go. So I left and then got outside and it is snowing and it's snowing, which is crazy because I had the top down on my jeep literally earlier this week and then now it's snowing so like it was so hot that i was like going convertible style uh literally on tuesday and now there is snow outside so a little bit wild but that is fine uh, if i can milk one more snow day out of this winter season then i will be okay with that unfortunately we started the lele and did not get ourselves a did not get ourselves you know what am i thinking yep didn't get ourselves a ho-oh so we cannot do the turn one kiawe i think i'm just going to slap that flow stone on there and then sycamore this hand i guess my hope is that i maybe would have been able to go with the whole turtonator strategy but as you can see i drew into a little bit of an awkward hand here so i think i just have to attach to my active lele and then kiawe or i could attach to the the ho -Oh and Kiawe. I think I'm going to attach to Lele and then with the goal of just kiawe to the ho -Oh next turn. I imagine that this Lele is going to get like smacked into. Uh, this is okay. This version of the deck is playing the Weavile. This is basically Zorak Weavile is what it appears that I am playing against. My opponent got a pretty good start there. Oh, and they're going to end me. That's fantastic. Very good. Okay. So they end me out of this uh miserable looking hand and okay i've got some other things going on here i actually can ultra ball for turtonator and then maybe just nitro tank like that could be a possibility i don't really want to i don't want to kiawe this turn i don't want to just ultra ball here for a kiawe i'd like to play a supporter but i don't have one of those either so Definitely a little bit of a sketchy start here, but if my opponent, you know, if they find DCE, what, I guess they would just energy drive my Lele for 60. That's like not huge. They could also stand in and mind jack. They did not find it though, but you can see they're preparing for that. If they do play Zorak Break, I don't know if they're playing Zorak Break in this list. Some lists play Zorak Break, some lists do not. We ended up getting the Cynthia, so we are dug out of this hand. This is fantastic. I actually can use the Invasion Floatstone, which is, I feel like that like rarely actually happens here. And then we can Ultra Ball away to Energy and grab, if we didn't prize it, oh, we prized it. Why did we prize it? Oh, no. Why did we prize it? Okay, so we prized it. That is not good. We prized the young lad turtonator gx okay so here we are i could lele grab lele i think i have to grab lele yep i think i have to grab lele and kiawe that just feels so bad but i have to get energy in play right now and there's really no other option so we are going to go ahead in yep and we are going to grab that kiawe and then having the invasion guy out i guess that's probably a little Oh my goodness, yeah, now I have three Pokemon with abilities in play. This just seems bad. Maybe I should not have put this. I always forget that this Dawn Wings Necrozma GX has a darkness weakness like that. <laughs> that always gets me. But uh, okay, that's fine. We're here. We're, we're out here. I think I'm just going to put another energy. Oh my gosh, putting energy anywhere feels bad. I think I'm fine keeping that one there. I think I'm going to Invasion and then retreat probably into my other Lele. Let's just do that. And then let's attach here and then Kiawe. And we're gonna put four energy onto my Ho-Oh. And I think that's just all we could do. Like we gotta imagine probably my opponent is gonna get something silly 
this upcoming turn like you know dc guzmo my dawn wings and just knock that out if they do that then that's fine i mean that it's not great but i'm gonna have to live with it i gotta try and dig this turtonator out of my prizes unfortunately i not only prized the turtonator i'm pretty sure i prized the salandit as well so i don't have the option to go with salazzle so things are just getting off to a little bit of an awkward start here in Ho-Oh land. I also have too many Pokemon down with abilities, and I forgot the Dawn Wings has a weakness to dark. So we probably would have wanted to forego the Dawn Wings strategy here, but we'll see if we can make it work. Okay, they did not have the Guzma, that or they were not going for it. They just decided to play there's Cynthia there without trading. I am fine with that. They did not feel confident maybe getting the Guzma energy off of the trade. So I am a-okay with that. If they just hit into this Tapu Lele, we are cool. Granted, if they do get, like, you know, Floatstone, Darkness Energy, Choice Band, then my Lele is knocked out. But that's fine. If they waste their... Their Weavile there, knocking out my Lele. I definitely do not mind that. However, it is a little. I would like to like knock out the the Weavile with like Lele, but I won't quite be able to do that since that only requires one Darkness Energy. See, my opponent has standed in already before doing that second trade. I wonder what they're going for here. If they already have the next darkness energy in hand or if they have a dce if they plan on using mind jack if they plan on float stoat in this bad boy and retreating nope they got the second dark and a choice band so i think they're just going to hit into this tapu lele and that's fine with me definitely no problems there they are doing what 369 to 130 damage that's that's not bad so i can definitely deal with that mine jack for a 130 and i've got a cynthia for next turn however unfortunately okay i could bomb something real quick like i could lay like oh that feels bad though because then i am just like literally just feeding into that that weavile there so that's like really horrible so let's just go ahead and cynthia see if we can draw into anything else we've got a scorched earth and i have a fire energy in my hand so i could play that I could also attach the fire energy and do, I think I just knock out the Zoroark with this Lele. Like that probably makes the most sense. And two, four, six, a 10. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense as far as my plays go. And then I'll just invasion and retreat into the Lele. I'm going to save that Scorched Earth, I think, in case my opponent plays a stadium that I want to counter. I think that probably makes the most sense. And let's just energy drive for knockout. Maybe we'll get ourselves something nice like a Turtonator. I don't know. Maybe. Nope. But there's Salandit. So that definitely is fine too. Salandit can give us a nice way. That's Salazzle GX. Can give us a nice way to end the game there with that heat, uh, Diabolical Claws. Once we end up going up on a few prizes, it only requires like two. Uh, they're definitely getting Darkness Energy Choice Band here to take out this Lele. That's like mildly annoying. However, I don't plan on putting any more Pokemon with abilities into play after this. So they're just going to be dealing with like two Pokemon with abilities in play. And that won't really get them any knockouts. And then if I can just find out a way to take like back to back prizes here, I should be fine because I could take this knockout. Then my Ho-Oh can take one more knockout. Um, you know, maybe with a Guzma the following turn or an invasion or something like that, so long as I get a choice ban. And I should be okay because this deck shouldn't really have any way to knock out a clean Ho -Oh GX. So the Ho -Oh GX should be good for five prize or for three prizes. I should be able to make that pretty good. We're going to go ahead and bench that, not bench that, but play that. And then we'll put the Salandit down. I want to get a Fire Energy onto the Salandit like really badly this turn. And I think that I just have to play this in. It also limits my opponent. I don't want to play the Ultra Ball because I definitely want some Guzmas left in deck as well. And I want to have an option to be able to get my Salazzle back. So this was a good rip. I'm fine with that. I could play the Scorched Earth, but I definitely don't want to do that. I think I just go in i have the choice band for next turn so i can hit 
Invasion and then Phoenix Burn for 210. That's fine. I think I just put this here, and then now I'm like, you know, next turn I'm threatening Ace Alazel, so that's cool. I don't want to bench that Volcanion. I'm just going to be powering up my opponent's attacks there. So we're just going to Phoenix Burn, and since we do have the Invasion guy there, we can use that again and again. And we got a Cynthia off the prizes. That is really good as well. We were missing that draw supporter in hand for next turn. And you could just see how good this Salazzle GX is going to be to help us clean up this game. If I can take two prizes with this ho -Oh, if I can just take two more prizes, then that Diabolical Claws, I'm just one energy attachment away from using that Diabolical Claws, could do 200 damage just so easily. Choice ban, making that go all the way up to 230. So if my opponent does decide to attack me with Weavile again, that puts me in a little bit of a weird position because then, like, uh, then I actually, like, don't have Guzma in hand, so I would have to attack into it again, which is like not something I want to do. However, I would hope that I could Cynthia and then Invasion and maybe Heat Blast. That kind of would be the goal there. If I could just Heat Blast the Weavile, it's definitely much better than having to use Phoenix Burn on a Weavile. So my opponent went for their draw supporter, so they're not Guzmang. My Dawnwings Necrozma has actually been pretty clutch. I was a little nervous about putting him out early, but he's been fine, actually. I mean, my opponent has not Guzmaed it up, has not targeted it down, and you can see the deck just runs much smoother with access to that Dawnwings Necrozma, being able to utilize Invasion. Also, my opponent has not uh, field blowered it yet. My opponent has got two field blowers down, but the field, you know, still got a float stone on that Dawn Wings, which is just, you know, it has provided some much needed mobility for this deck and has been really good as well. If my opponent just hits into me with this Zorark this turn, that plays perfectly into what I want them to do. I mean, that's exactly what I want. I want them to hit into this with a Zorark. That just would, I already have Choice Ban in hand. I Invasion, Retreat, Choice Ban, locked and loaded, good to go. Now, if my opponent were to Field Blower this Dawn Wings here, that would be bad because then I don't have that Invasion, Free Retreat, ready to roll. Are they just going to hit? Oh, yeah, Riotous Beating. Okay, they did not get any sort of fancy plays there. They just hit into the ho -Oh. I even have the energy for the Salazzle. Wow, all the pieces coming together here perfectly. Could not ask for a better situation. I'm just going to go ahead and play that, and then I'm going to save the Choice Band and the Volcano just in case my opponent decides to Field Blower me or something. Then we're just going to Cynthia and I can, I already have Scorched Earth, but I'm not going to play it. I'm just going to save it. And then I want to also probably Ultra Ball some cards away just to thin my deck. So let's just go ahead and do that. In case my opponent decides to end me, I'll just get another Lele out just so I have some dead cards out of my deck. And then let's just Invasion and Retreat. And now... We are, yep, going to just go ahead and Phoenix Burn for 210 damage. Knockout on that Zorark GX. Now I just need Guzma for game. There's the Turtonator we were missing. Now I just need Guzma for game, and I could do it on a Lele. I already have the two energy I need to Diabolical Claws. Does 50 damage times the number of prize cards I have taken. There's no way, I don't see any way for my opponent to be able to pull this one out. They would have to knock out, they would have to knock out the ho -Oh with the Weavile and end me in the same turn. Like that would have to be what would happen. And they didn't end me. So I already have game. There's nothing they can do. We're gonna pack this one up. Salazzle was an absolute all-star in this game. Just being able to close things out, you saw how there was no way I was getting another Ho-Oh built up. The Turtonator was prized, it just wasn't happening. I had planned on trying to go for the Turtonator early since I had to discard so many energy, but just being able to manually attach to Salazzle twice definitely got there. I love the Salazzle GX. 
as kind of like a clean up hitter in this deck, just being able to close the game out with just those two manual attachments. So you saw there, it was just so easy to set up. I even prized the Salandit and it didn't matter because this deck takes such aggressive prizes that I was just able to pull the Salande out of the prizes anyway and eventually evolve it up. So good game to my opponent. We're just going to go ahead and Guzma this Lele and get it done with Diabolical Claws. Crazy. I don't think I've ever won a game with Diabolical Claws, but there you go. We prized a ho -Oh as well. Definitely the Salazzle was impressive. So this was a pretty cool list. This is uh, Stefan's list, top eight from the uh what from the from the regional that happened malmo that's it from malmo regionals uh that happened a few weeks ago so shout out to stefan for a really cool list again to show that off again another cool thing that oh we got some car banks hey shout out to car bank and car bank break i heard uh in through the grapevine that car bank break is like a ten dollar card sorry guys <laughs> sorry car bank is pretty expensive now so that's crazy car bank break was like a two dollar card just three weeks ago so uh, if you got your carvings early then that is lucky for you I'm going to go ahead and show off Stefan's Ho-Oh list again from the top eight of the Malmo Regional Championships. Another cool thing that I've decided to start doing, I'm going to be copying and pasting the list. A lot of you have been asking for this. I'm finally going to do it. I'm going to copy and paste the list into the description, the bottom of the description. So anybody who wants the list, you can go ahead, copy and paste it there. Somebody in the comments was saying that it's possible that like newer players might not know the cards just by looking at them. Um, wait, why do I only have one Kiawe in here? Oh, this is not the list. Guys, ignore what I'm doing. That's Volcanion, okay? That is not the list. This is the list. All right, this is the list that we were just playing. Here we go. So, uh, I was distracted. But anyways, we are going to be putting this list in the in the description so that you can copy and paste it someone in the comments was saying that a newer player might not just know the name of the card by looking at it also got a lot of players who watch on mobile and it's a little harder to see these deck lists on mobile devices so if you want the list you can find it in the description I'm gonna be trying to do that from now on but anyways thank you all for watching the video make sure to like the video sub to the channel let me know what you guys think of ho -Oh in the comments below thank you all for watching